Aria, where are you? Answer now. Aria. Oh, hello. It's been a while. And why is that? Oh, I remember because you haven't messaged me for two whole goddamn months. Good grief, young lady. Huh? Don't give me huh. I don't need to hear any attitude from you. I see you've still got no awareness of the fact that you're a wife of this household. No, but... When your mother-in-law kindly goes out of her way to message you, you put whatever you're doing aside and respond immediately. That's one of the rules you live by as my son's wife. If you understand, please be more mindful next time. Um. I am not done speaking yet. Quit your butting in and listen to what your mother-in-law has to say. Oh. Firstly, I recently saw a new apartment where you two got together for the first time. The place you went to live after you moved out. Our new apartment? And, my god. You haven't been doing the housework at all, have you? The room was filthy. There were clothes scattered all over the floor and tissues left, tossed all over the place. You didn't even wash the pots and pans. I've never seen such a sorry state. How could you call that place a home? Are there sweet wrappers and a ready meal? Hamburger boxes overflowing out of the garbage all over the floor. Not to mention the mountain of empty beer cans on the table. My little guy doesn't drink alcohol, so they could only be yours. They were, weren't they? Admit it. No, I have allergies and break out in rashes when I drink alcohol. Be quiet, young lady. I did not give you permission to speak. Oh, sorry. To top it all off, the place was covered in dust. You haven't been vacuuming at all, have you? I only allowed you to continue working after you got married because you said you'd have no problem juggling your work with the housework. But if you're not capable of looking after your husband, I suggest you resign immediately so you can focus on your womanly duties. This is why women should stay at home housewives once they are married. Um. Are you finished now? What? You appear to be making a lot of misconceptions, so allow me to correct you. Don't talk back to me, young lady. Me and Guy are already divorced. Yes, I'm aware of that. Huh? If you know, why are you throwing around words like mother-in-law and wife? Why wouldn't I? Come on, Arya, please use your brain for once. Even if you're divorced, as long as you and my little guy are living together, you're still his wife. And you still have a role to fulfill in our family. It's your sacred duty and obligation. To serve your husband with devotion and loyalty. And to display the proper respect towards me, your mother-in-law. Do you have any idea how little sense what you're saying makes? The fact that we're divorced already makes us strangers now. We stopped being a couple and started leading separate lives the moment the divorce was finalized. Which is why any notion that I have to look after or fulfill my womanly duties towards him are ridiculous, plain and simple. I already warned you, young lady. Don't talk back to your mother-in-law. I'm not talking back. I'm having a normal conversation with you. Like a reasonable human being. Reasonable? Which part? Let me say it once more. I'll make it crystal clear this time to help you understand. Any woman who doesn't look after her husband is a failure of a wife. If you can't keep on top of the housework while working, then hurry up and quit your job already. How about I contact your company and tell them you've decided to step down to focus on being a housewife? No, stop it. I don't think there's any danger of them taking a resignation declared by some stranger over the phone seriously. 
but I don't want to cause them any inconvenience. Then just quit now while you still have some dignity left. Let's face it, after seeing how lazy you are at home, you're probably a burden to them, too. I'm not a burden, actually, I'm a high-valued employee. And besides, if I want to quit, I wouldn't be able to make ends meet. Oh, don't talk such nonsense. Are you seriously saying that my little guy's salary alone isn't enough to keep you going? But I already told you we're not living that kind of life together anymore. I think what you meant to say is that you're a shameful disappointment of a wife. Looking after the household by skillfully managing the finances is a wife's duty. But we already divorced, and I'm not his wife anymore. How many times do I have to say it? Lord, give me strength. Give it a rest. You're like a broken record. Just because you're divorced doesn't mean you can start neglecting the housework and living like swamp rats. Oh, my poor guy. In that case, you're wasting your time. I live in a different state now. What? My company offered me a transfer as soon as the divorce went through, so I took them up on it and moved out of the state. Good grief. A wife who goes off on solo business ventures away from her family. I've never heard anything so absurd in my life. Ah, uh, like I told you, I'm not your son's wife anymore. And you're not my family. Quit your job and come back immediately. Huh? That said, I may be firm, but I'm also kind. Which is why I'm willing to grant you some leeway. Common sense dictates the resignation procedures usually take about a month. So I'm very kindly willing to give you 30 days to make the necessary arrangements and come back. I'll look after little guy in the meantime. So hurry up and quit your job and move back here so you can be by our side again. I told you, we're divorced. Quit talking nonsense. Now you're just arguing for argument's sake, young lady. Nonsense? You heard me. A few moments later. Hey, guy. It's been a while. Is now a good time for you? Is that Aria? Hey. Yeah, long time no see. Sorry to message you despite us being divorced and all. That's cool, don't sweat it. It's not like we divorced because we don't get along. Maybe things will change when one of us finds someone else. But for the time being, there's no reason we can't message each other. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks. Anyway, what's up? I want to speak to you about your mom. Ha! Huh? My mom? Ah, she's not causing problems again, is she? Darn it. Well, you could say she's causing problems. It's more that she doesn't listen to a word I say. It's like talking to a brick wall. What happened? Well, to sum it up. Even if you are divorced, as long as you two live together, your guy's wife, and as long as you're his wife, you need to look after him. If you can't keep on top of the housework while working, then quit your job. That's basically the gist of it. What the? What did you say to her? I told her that me and you are strangers since we divorced. And I keep insisting I'm not your wife anymore. So I have no obligation to do any of that. But she just keeps coming back at me with her favorite. I know you may be divorced. However, yada, yada, yada. The conversation goes nowhere because she ignores everything I say on a fundamental level. I give up. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Just like always, she refers to you as her little guy. It's like you're an eight-year-old kid to her. Oh, I'm sorry. Does this still upset you? Well, about that. 
As soon as our divorce went through, my dad also moved out. And now my parents are living separately. Ever since then, her over-interfering in my life reached levels previously unimaginable. It got so bad I couldn't take it anymore. I was so desperate to get away from her. I snuck out of the house in the middle of the night a week ago so I could finally be free of her. I see. Sounds like it's been tough for you, too, Guy. My mom was the reason we divorced in the first place, after all. I felt so guilty about you having to put up with her. I thought at least if we divorced, you'd be able to escape from it all. But even that didn't work, did it? It would seem I underestimated her. I'm fine, really. Don't worry about me. Actually, I got a transfer at the company, and I'm living far away in a different state. Now there's no danger of her following me and causing me problems. In fact, she couldn't possibly. Oh, really? I'm pleased to hear that. More importantly, what about you, Guy? If anything, it sounds like things might be more difficult on your end. Me? Well, you see, your mom insisted she was going to go over and start looking after you. Since I was failing to fulfill my womanly duties towards with working all the time. Which means she must know your current address. What? But I didn't tell her. Really? Based on the messages yesterday, I kind of got the impression she was already at your apartment. Is there a chance she found your new address somehow and snuck in while you weren't home? No. I really don't think that's possible. You sure? I got a transfer at work the other day too. I'm staying at a company provided dormitory right now. The rules state that non-employees aren't allowed to enter without permission under any circumstances, even visiting family members. It's a long way from mom's house. I don't think she could make it this far out, even if she did know my address. I see, huh? Yeah. It's a mystery. You can say that again. Well, whatever. It's not like she can actually do anything to me. You don't mind? I have absolutely no intention of going back to the family home. I don't even read her messages these days. To be honest, I was thinking of blocking her soon. She can do what she likes. It's not my problem anymore. After everything that went down for the sake of my mental health, I resolved never to tolerate her shenanigans ever again. I see. It's probably for the best for you to block her too, Aria. I may be her son, but you two are literally strangers now. So there's no reason you should have to put up with her irritating messages. You make a good point. I couldn't help but feel a little wary about what she was planning on doing next. But actually, after keeping an eye on her a little while longer, just to be safe, I think I'm going to block her. I think it's for the best. Anyway, I'm about to jump in the bath. Sure. Thanks for today, guy. Night, night. Good night. One week later. Aria, answer. What the hell is going on? You've got some explaining to do. Um. What do you mean? Some strange woman walked in while I was cleaning little guy's room. She yelled, Who are you? What are you doing in my apartment? Before I could even figure out what was going on, some middle-aged by bolted in. They started shouting like crazy lunatics and threatened to call the police. They were saying such awful things to me, Aria. It was horrible. I was so startled I ran to the bathroom and locked myself in. What's going on? Explain. Oh, no, you didn't. 
Goodness me. There's no way. You didn't, by any chance, enter a complete stranger's house, did you? Huh? Where are you right now? In the apartment in Rainbow Town. What? Oh, my god. That's not the room in the tower block called Comfort Heights, is it? Tell me it isn't. Yes, it is. What of it? Room 202. I came to clean this filthy mess of a room for my little guy. Since you were too busy playing the important office lady to fulfill your womanly duties. You and little guy are living together here, right? Why do you think that? Because there are two sets of plates and cutlery. But then this happened. I have no idea what's going on. Listen, Jane, that apartment you're in right now. Belonged to my aunt who let me stay with her for about ten days after me and Guy finished with the divorce proceedings. Wait, what? Your aunt? However, my aunt moved out a month ago. Based on what you're telling me, it seems like some new people moved in. But that doesn't make any sense. I found this address in my little guy's room. It was written in a notepad I found on his desk. He probably wrote it down when I told him where I was staying. Huh? I had a lot of stuff when I moved out, but I didn't want to hang around and get in his way for too long. So he said if I forgot anything, he'd send it later on in the post. Which is why I told him I'd be staying at my aunt's till the end of the month and sent him her address. He probably just forgot to toss his old notepad in the trash. How could this be? I thought he wrote down his new address for me so I could come and see him. Oh, my God! The only reason I didn't try following him when he disappeared in the night is because I thought, knowing his address. I could go and see him whenever I wanted. If this isn't this apartment, where's my little guy right now? Tell me. Nope. Sorry. I don't even know myself. I know you're lying. What kind of wife doesn't know where her husband lives? That just doesn't happen. Like I said, me and your son are no longer married. And like I said, even if you are divorced. Want to know the reason why we got divorced, Jane? Because of you. What? Me? Guy hates how you meddle in his life all the time. He told me you've been babying him and interfering with basically everything he ever does since he was a teenager. Then when we married, you started acting like some kind of dictator trying to turn me into his personal slave. I was to cater to his every whim at all times, regardless of what I wanted. He blamed himself, and his mental health took a turn for the worse. He stopped eating. He could barely sleep. He became a shell of his old self because of what you were putting me through. Huh? After a long, difficult decision, me and him decided that a divorce would be the best way to reduce the burden on both of us. So that's where we are now. Oh, my God. I just wanted my cherished beloved guy to be happy. Is that a crime? He's the one who said he hates you interfering. You drove your son to the emotional and psychological brink with your psychotic behavior. Does that sound like happiness to you? Oh, my God. What is this? I don't even. Is everything all right? What do you mean? I seem to remember you saying something about being locked in a stranger's bathroom. This is bad. I can hear police cars outside. That tends to happen when you illegally enter strangers' homes. To begin with, regarding how my ex-mother-in-law managed to enter a stranger's apartment, it turned out that the couple residing there had forgotten to lock the door when they both left for work, allowing her to sneak in unnoticed. 
she discovered a key that they had left on the table and took it upon herself to have a duplicate made at a local locksmith. For several consecutive days, she returned to the vacant apartment while the occupants were at work, diligently taking care of her son. Eventually, she unexpectedly encountered the unsuspecting couple as they returned from work. Naturally, they considered her a major nuisance and promptly called the police to handle the strange woman hiding in their bathroom. This incident ultimately became the final straw that led to my ex-father-in-law divorcing her, as they had already been living apart. Apparently, she broke down into tears and screamed, feeling alone and not even knowing where her beloved little guy had moved to. With her own parents no longer around and no one to rely on, she embarked on a life of solitude. Meanwhile, I am currently living happily in an apartment provided by my company after I transferred. Before blocking her, I received one last message from her, expressing how she cries herself to sleep every night because of me.